Tony, I uh, first of all welcome to Chris, uh, kind of back to Chris conference room. Obviously, we have a full house. The same rules apply. We try to work both sides of the room. Everyone, be patient. This is going to be obviously a, a great deal of interest in this particular press conference. Tony, I, I, I couldn't help but think of the fact that going back to the 1950s, there was a very popular driver named Sam Hanks who waited a long time, I think in his 13th start, and was able to win the Indianapolis 500. Obviously, you have led, you have led nine races or so in a row. You have been in position to win. Uh, I, I don't think, uh, I think all of us could just uh, imagine the feeling that this time it's really going to happen. Take us through it. Uh, I mean, I don't know what, how to start, but uh, we had a great car, and um, I knew that from the get-go. We, uh, we had a great plan, and I mean, it's one of these days, man. Everything was so smooth. Jimmy was calm. <laughs> I was calm. Nobody yelling anything, and I was just, I felt that uh, there was everything under control. But I had 11 times that I've been here, I had it, the same thing. So, I just, uh, you know, when it was six laps to go, and when yeah, when I wasn't in the lead, I said, this might be the, this is my, this might be the day. Today might be the day, because I was in Ryan's position plenty of times. And, uh, okay, Luis. Hi. How are you? Nice to see you. Luis Frank, people. Um, and then I knew I had to get the lead on the restart because it could be a yellow, which it happened to me plenty of times here, and uh, it did. And uh, how uh, how life is funny. The yellow was my best friend. So people are saying that he did it on purpose, obviously not. But uh, I can see him mad out of the car, and then when he saw that I was in the lead, he was shaking his hand and he went like waving at me. <laughs> <laughs> it was special. It was very special. So I, I always, you know, I never had a doubt that I could win this thing. And we talked about it. I talked here many times that uh, I could do it or not. It was still, this place, this place is still going to be special. And I guess today it worked. It was a lot of numerology. If we go talk about between Jenna Fryer, Jimmy, Zanardi, I mean, we... I don't know, man. The 11 and the 12 the hunt us the entire month. I think the car is going to, we're going to put 1,012. It's going to be my number next year. So. <laughs> That's true. I shouldn't mention the previous time, but the second time I, yeah, she brought me luck. Every time I got married, I won a championship for so. Honey, I'm okay. I don't want to win anything anymore. <laughs> I'll smooth that out for him. I can do that. I'll sleep on the couch tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, uh, I don't think anything can possibly replace the thrill of winning as, as a racer, which you have done. But you have to have some sense of you're a part of, of handing and part of, of putting together a team that this guy who has been so close won in Indianapolis. That has to be just one. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, I, I never won it as a, as a, as a driver. Um, in fact, I couldn't win it as a driver, so I had to hire the right guy to do it. And maybe another baby, boy, get a baby Borg on my shelf. But uh, now Tony's just—he's just the consummate professional. Uh, he's been a long time coming here, and we set out as a team uh, at the end of last year to really just focus on Indy. Uh, you know, instead of the whole series, you know, the whole season, we, we took it. We took a, a chassis, and in the name of the, the old school name, when we called it a special, and we put it, we put it aside. We worked on it, and, and all credit to the boys and. Uh, you know, a lot of hard work over the over over the hard, over the winter and keeping things together. It's not an easy thing these days from a commercial standpoint. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Imran Sapila for coming on the team and, and uh, bringing bringing Simona and, and some of their group over to help to help uh, to finish out a two car team and help carry us through the winter. And uh, you know, uh, Tony was right. You know, the stars started lining up for us, and um, we really didn't hit a race setup until about two hours to go. I don't know, I mean, most of you know Tony, but about two hours to go on Sunday before the, the, the week was over, he really had the, the worst car he had ever driven. He was ready to quit. He was hang up his boots. In a matter of 45 minutes, we somehow hit on something that was the best car he had ever had around here. We knew, we knew that at that point in time that we had the right guy and the car was good enough. We'd have a great shot for today. Let's open up to questions. Susie's working that side. 
and I will do the same. Tony, I saw you outside. You were holding some medals. We, we didn't hear the sound. I wonder what the stories are behind the medals that you were holding on to, what they mean to you. I didn't have enough buckets for all the things that my fans gave me to bring me luck. I probably had to bring a truck with me behind the car. But I, uh, there, there was two things. One was Zonardi's here, as you guys know, and he brought his Olympic gold medal. And right before the race, he gave it to Jimmy, and Jimmy brought it to the bus. And I was laying in bed. Uh, it was an hour before, and uh, Jimmy says, Zonardi asked you to rub it. And I rubbed it, and actually I cut away the thing. <laughs> Still at my bus. That was one. And uh, nine years ago, I went to make a visit in a hospital here in Indy. And uh, when I walked in, it was this girl. She was uh, 14 years old. She just had a, a stroke. And she was in a coma. And she was going to get a, a, a surgery the next morning. And I had this thing that my mom gave me. It was kind of a necklace, a colorful necklace, and uh, to, to protect me, not to bring me luck, because you know the way moms are. And she tells me to race slow, which... Um, so I took it out and I said, I said to her mother, I said, look, I don't know if you believe in these things, but I have this, I, mean, I had this for a while, and, and always protect me. My mother gave it to me. I want to give it to you. She's going to surgery. She was like a life risk. Anyway, uh, I gave it to her. She survived. She survived. She's uh, doing really well, and uh, you know, we kept in touch in the past years, and this year, four days ago, she showed up, gave me a letter with an envelope, and I opened, I opened the letter, and here it was. She said that uh, she had enough of luck in her life, and she got married, and then she wanted it uh, to give it back to me, to, to bring me luck. So uh, here it is. So uh, I think I retired that thing now. <laughs> Guys, the old gang at Angrenic Green Racing, you and uh, you and Dario and Dan and Jimmy, you've all won now. You have a thought on that? I'm oh, sorry? The, the old gang in Andretti Green. Yeah. You and Dario and Dan and Jimmy. Right. 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 You've all won now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, it's, uh, I guess Michael used to hire good drivers. <laughs> well, I used to, he still does. <laughs> Look at the result there, but uh, now I think, uh, we came from a generation that, uh, you know, including Jimmy on that, I mean, our, our generation was really tough. At the time, I was the youngest. They were the old dogs and uh, the guys that, uh, you know, we, they set the example. And now, actually, here we are. And uh, I think Dario proved that uh, the old guys can still drive fast. And uh, I'm right next to it, two years after him. And uh, that's awesome. I think we, uh, we showed... Uh, it's so nice to make history like that, you know, have good friends and have friends that really uh, are winners. I, I remember one day I was hanging with a, with a team owner that I can't, I can really, I don't want to elaborate on it, but uh, uh, he said uh, he only hang with winners because if you hang with losers, you become one. So I guess uh, it's pretty good. Nate Ryan, USA Sports, to your lucky day. Um, so you talked about the reception you got out there from other teams and how that touched you. You got the long hug from Dario, and I'm sure he said some really heartfelt things. And then you have this crowd of fans out there that mob usually come through, and they're chanting TK like an hour after you win. I know it's hard to like put that ball in perspective and talk about it, but this is obviously a really, really popular win. And you know, what does that mean to be so well regarded by everybody? Well, you know, first I think we can prove a theory that people say that nice guys don't win. And uh, I guess we proved them wrong. Second one, the, the, the 11 number never had one here, so we made another history. Somebody told me that this morning. I didn't know if it was a negative or a positive <laughs> comment. But I think, I, think uh, I mean, this place, I've always said it. I, it's been special to me, and, and I meant that when I said it. You know, uh, I didn't have to win here to fuel. I mean, I, I kind of said that out there. The fans. They actually spoiled me a little bit on my win because when I finished 11th here, starting that last that I went, I got out of the car and it was exactly the same. So I already had felt a little bit. Obviously, I hadn't drink the milk, this direction, and all the stuff. But so it means a lot to me because so many people really, I mean, I can feel that they wanted me to win, and it's such a selfish thing to do because you know what are they getting from? You know, I'm the one that gets the trophy and. 
and if you can bring some joy to them. And I think the best thing was trying to put an exciting race for them. And, and I said it before the race, uh, I, I believed that um, this win was more for people out there than actually that, I, that for me. I wanted it all my life, but over the years, I was kind of okay with the fact that I may never had a chance to win it. And then I started coming back here because from, from day one, I mean, it, it's really, it catches me by surprise. I can't walk out there. I couldn't before. I don't know now. Maybe it's going to get worse. But And the parade everywhere. It's just it's just unbelievable. So uh, it's nice. I think uh, wins are important. Trophies are really nice. But I think what I'm going to take forever, it's definitely this. Tony, I know you're a student of, of the sport, and I don't know whether you ever had a chance to meet Lloyd Ruby or not, but it seemed like you had been linked with him as far as best drivers to never win the Indianapolis 500 to finally be rid of that title. Talk about how well and relieved you feel. Uh, it wasn't a pressure. I mean, Robin Miller tried to hammer that on me every year that I was here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Robin. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, again, you know, it's... It's so hard to win a race, and it's so even harder to pick a race to win. So I'm glad that I put myself out of that group and put myself in the other group. So, uh, you know, uh, before the race, it was very special. Parnelli came to me and said, I want you to win. I'm like, whoa, all right. So, uh, you know, it's, I've always admired the legends of, of this place. You know, uh, you know, Rick Mears, AJ, Mario. And, and Pornelli, I mean, and, and it, it starts to get into you, and then to have these people telling that, telling you that they wanted you to win, it's awesome. So uh, I'm glad I, I'm on the other side, and I can put my uh, my big nose on that trophy. <laughs> <laughs> TK over here to your right. Uh, two real quick ones here. Um, when did you did you ever think that the bad luck bug might get you as the laps were starting to wind down? Like, You've been so close so many times. Did you ever think waiting for something bad to happen? And then the second quick one, um, when Earnhardt won Daytona, that was such a popular victory. And Jimmy, if you wanted to chime in on that too, it is almost a kind of feel like that that someone finally got something that they've been long longing for. Your first question, uh, I never thought about it until when Yellen was one lap to go and I started to check everything in my car. I mean, do we have enough fuel? Do we have four wheels? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you kind of go crazy. And, and, and the pace car guy, whoever was on the side, we out of turn two and this guy is actually celebrating. I'm like, go, can you go quicker? <laughs> it's going to be a long lap if you keep doing that. So, no, up until when yell, I didn't. Obviously, we're racing. We're trying to concentrate on that. And uh, your second question, I don't know, man. It's to be compared by, you know, Dale. I was already in America when he did that, and I thought it was so cool. And I came down pit lane. It was not the same, but it was it was close. I saw a lot of teams and and people that I think they really thought that I deserved to win. So uh, it was awesome. It's a great feeling. Jennifer, AP, Tony, enough. Bad luck had come to you before, so I guess the first caution when Graham brought out the caution, were you worried you wouldn't get a chance that it would go yellow to the end? And then this, when they did restart it, did you think I'm gonna have to go right now because if another caution comes out? Graham's yellow, I knew there was gonna be time because you can tell the way they conduct the things. The pace car was slow, really like it got really slow because they're trying to play. And we want to finish a race on the green. But on top of that, I knew that the yellow flag with six, seven, eight laps to go, it's a big potential for another yellow right away. So I didn't want to be in the lead because I knew I was going to get caught on the restart. And I was actually, if it, again, it fell through. I was in the perfect place exactly where I want to be, right behind the leader with three to go because I knew a, 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 a potential yellow could happen. So, and then it happened, and I guess I was right. Hey, boss. Did you have to set that up at all? Did you have to set that up at all, or did you just go? No, nah, I mean, you can't, you can't predict the yellow. So I was second, but when it went green, I went. I said, I'm going for the lead. I, I'm going to lead. I was going to try to lead the last three laps, but I said, I want to be first, because if something happens, and I know I've been there. I've been back there. I mean, with... Any time it goes yellow, 15 to you know, 15 laps to go on, 
people are just turn crazy. It's, it's, I've been, I got caught on that at times, and because then it's time to race. Everybody's like, before you could see it. Okay, no, please, Marco, you go. Please, Ryan, you go. No. It's your turn. So it's like, and then Ruben said that to me last year. He says, man, what happened? 20 laps to go. People turned mad. I said, no, then we start racing. <laughs> so, so I knew there was big potential. So I, that, that's why I did what I did. Louis Frank, Order Week. Not to embarrass you, Tony. Jimmy, what makes Tony so special with all his rivals? He touched the front, seeing these drivers, maybe team members. What, what is those? No. <laughs> what makes Tony so special? You Jimmy, guys? Jimmy, I have plenty of stories of you, Jimmy. <laughs> Remember Italy? Well, uh, <laughs> I see he's been, he's been a, you know, a leader of the drivers since he was younger and, and back in the days with uh, Dario and Greg and uh, you know, there's a lot of camaraderie and uh, he's also out there to help younger drivers coming up with information and uh, just he's a great leader and uh, the leader of the drivers. And, uh, that's why it's such a popular victory. And, and it's not just the drivers, Lewis. It's, I mean, I, I was just blown away when driving around in the pace car and it, virtually everybody was still in the stands ch chanting TK, T. I I mean, just make your skin crawl. And, and just shows the love that they had for him. And, uh, you know, it was it was great. I didn't mean that in a bad way, but it was just it was it was phenomenal. One quick follow up, Tony. Were you making love to the yard of bricks or what? Uh, kind of. But my wife was kissing the yard more than she kissed me the entire freaking weekend. So we. Been... <laughs> People ask me if I ever, like, thought how I was going to celebrate, and I never wanted to think about it. So I just, I went there and I did whatever I wanted it to do. Tony, another question, uh, just uh, based on the, the fans here at Indianapolis. You tweeted before the race. I hope I can do this for you guys. Um, that 33rd, when he started from last, went to the lead, then left. Was that the first time you really noticed that the fans here at Indy had a lot of love for you, or was there another moment early in your five-year career where you started to, to realize that? No, I think it started it uh, when I had a crash. I, I, I'm not going to recall the year, but when uh, the sus I had a suspension failure in the back straightaway, I was sitting in third place. I had led a, a bunch of laps, and um, I ended up hitting the wall in turn three. By the time we, you know, the car slowed down. I got out of the car, the entire place was crazy. I think it was 2008. And since then, every year, it's just kept growing and growing and growing. And I think every year that went by that I didn't win, we just kept growing the fan base. More people felt sorry, more people felt that, you know, I deserve it to win. And it's just, I don't know, it got out of control, actually. And, and it's awesome. I mean, it's. Uh, now probably people not even gonna cheer for me anymore. Maybe you know. It's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Tony, you're talking about numerology. You're going to be the 100th face etched on the Board Warner Trophy, and I mean that's quite an accomplishment in itself. And talk a little bit about what it's going to be like. How big of a critic are you going to be of, of the way the sculptor does your uh, oh, face the, on there? Oh, trust me, he can't make me look as bad as I look already. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine. But as far as the honor, the hundredth face on a trophy that's very iconic. I mean, it's it's again, we're gonna. It's just a number. I mean, it, it just to have my face there, it's already it's a big deal. So uh, it'll be it'll be actually bad. Jimmy probably would prefer if it was 112, but I don't think I'll make it up to 112. But uh, it's uh, it's an honor just to be there for sure. Tony. Uh what did you think uh, if the crash hadn't happened? You had this 21-year-old kid that hadn't seen the speedway until two weeks ago, and he was right on your tail and, and ready to take over. Actually, and it was good. He around all this time trying to win. He was, he was going to learn a lot in the last two laps. <laughs> He's gonna love this place, but he's gonna have to come back. <laughs> he's a good kid. We go go karting together in Miami, and uh, it's funny because uh, at Carb Day, he made a pass on me on the short shoot, which we don't do that very often. And uh, I looked at him. I said, "Man, I didn't talk to him, but I thought this kid's good. If 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 he manages to finish the race, he's gonna finish well." 
So it was funny because in the race he got a hiccup in turn one and I put the same pass on him. Here you go, kid. And then with three to go, when I saw him behind me, I said, oh, all right, man. All right, let's, let's start the lessons here. But they went the other so. Uh, Tony over here to your right. Uh, he mentioned Earnhardt, and of all the other professional sports, there's always, it seems, that one polarizing figure who finally gets a championship. Um, I know it probably won't even set in until tomorrow morning what you've really accomplished here, but do you already feel like there's that weight lifted now after the 11 years? And just kind of talk about those emotions going forward. I don't know what to think. I mean, uh, I don't know what, what, what to expect, what's coming. I, I'm just... I'm going to enjoy it a lot. It's been a while that I hadn't won the race, actually. So, uh, and usually you take it for granted sometimes. When you win very often, you just, yeah, it's one more and you're thinking about the next one. But this one, obviously, it's the biggest one I've ever had. Now I have a championship in Indy 500, so it's a, it's a huge, remarkable achievement for me. And. I mean, that proves that I can still race for a few more years. <laughs> <laughs> right, Imre? As well. So, uh, you know, our country gets up this year, so hopefully we'll find some money to... Uh, I don't want to go anywhere. I told Jimmy that even before we had won anything, and, and I have the people that, uh, that I want to have. So, I, uh, I'm going to enjoy it, enjoy my wife, enjoy my kid when I get to see him that, you know, he hammered on me last week that he said, Dad, I'm five years old and I don't recall seeing winning a race. That was harsh. <laughs> <laughs> I told him to go to his grandma's, his grandma's house and look all the trophies that I had won, but uh, he didn't go, it didn't go well with them, so I can, I can show him this one. Tony, uh, this was a record-breaking 500 in many areas, you know, number of lead changes, number of drivers that led the race, how, and how much green you had, uh, about 130 laps. Talk about the perspective from a driver's standpoint with so much uncertainty at the top with the lead changing almost every given lap. Yeah, it was a chess game, you know. It's funny enough because I don't even know how to play chess, but I guess <laughs> you played around. And, uh, it, it was just a good day. For me, I mean, uh, I was extremely confident. I never lost uh, my focus. <laughs> Jimmy was funny. I mean, it was coming up to a lap 100, and I was running second. He says, "Next lap is lap 100. If you want to lead it, just letting you know." And then, <laughs> I was going to ask if there was any money for that, but there is. It, there was. Uh, okay, we just need it. I tried right. harder because well, I tried, but I crossed the half a lap to figure it out. Amadinger was a nose away from uh, ahead of me, which is kind of hard to do, but he did it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it was it was just a good day. You know, I was extremely confident, but I think with. The past 11 years, with I've been through everything here, I wasn't, I had any non expectations. I said, you know what? We do what we can. We put ourselves in a position. I will always try to position myself at the right time. I didn't want to lead. I got yelled by Jimmy, like, dude, I know you're showing off, but get back there because we got to save some fuel. And I moved to the front anytime I wanted. So to me, that proved it to me that if I put myself in the right position and everything else fell through, I was going to win it. So that's what happened. Maybe as a, uh, the outcome changes your opinion on this, but as a driver, do you like this style of racing, or are you a little bit frustrated by the fact that if you have a good car, maybe in leading you can't get away? No, I mean, I'm always a big fan of the best car wins the race, but that doesn't happen very often. So I think the race for the fans, it was unbelievable. I mean, for me, obviously it was very few. We had a very few yellows, but by the time we said, okay, this is the last stop, I was like, already? It wasn't like a long day, so we, it was a lot of action going on, a lot of people uh, that didn't want to lead. You can tell the people that had a lot of experience here didn't want to lead, and, and the guys that never had, the rookies, like, ah, I want to do this. And, 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 and no, I wouldn't change anything. I think the competition has been extremely tough, and uh, at times, yeah, I hate few mileage races, but this is a 500 mile race. There's no way you're not going to play that strategy anyway. So it's, uh, if you say all our races are going to be like that, I to totally disapprove, which I, I know for a fact they're not. But uh, here, it's, you know, it's free for all, so anything can happen. This is the final question. Hey, Gavin, uh, a couple of years ago, you and I were chatting in Milwaukee about some 
guys like yourself and Dan Weldon were just not getting the chance like, uh, that you used to. Dan didn't have the drive um, after Indy, and you were close going into that season to not having a ride. Can you kind of take us through that since the, in the last two years where it's like to get here to win at Indy after being really kind of close to almost not having um, a ride? That's a big reward because uh, if it wasn't for Kevin Kimmy, uh, Kimmy. <laughs> Jimmy and Imran and myself putting the sponsorship together, I wouldn't be here. And I fought for it. With the, we got a call the last minute of seven days before Sam beat three years ago. And it's rewarding because we kept insisting. We knew we could do this. And, uh, you know, these are hard times for everybody. I, I, I've always asked myself, why do I deserve better than somebody else? So it's not, you know, I had, I had my career, it's pretty successful. I had, I raced for a big team. And the prime time. I had four awesome teammates that we enjoyed it a lot. I won a lot of races. So I, I've always like, I was grateful for that. So I've never felt sorry for myself. It was just a situation and this is life. It's plenty of ups and downs and then you've got you've to gotta go for it. And you take the opportunities and you, if you're fortunate enough, I believe that if, you, if you're a good person, good things will come to you. And, and we've been surviving. We have our struggles. We fight. We you know we we're gonna fight for the base car now. Who's gonna have it? And, and, and stuff, but thank you. Did you hear? Yeah, Chip didn't nope. give me the base car. Oh, I asked Chip. He gives an audio car. Uh, I know. I I already know what his comeback's gonna be. If you win another championship before me, I'll give you a car. <laughs> so yeah, it's 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 rewarding, and it, it shows that uh, if you never give up. Many good things, good things will happen to you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks, guys. Thank you.